goes without question that there are many myths and legends surrounding around the game of Roblox Doors. And with Floor 2 update, of course, even more myths are being dropped within the community. But are they actually true and legit? Well, these are 10 uncovered myths we'll be investigating within the Floor 2 update. Here's one for you. If you like and subscribe, you will have a higher chance of beating Floor 2. Myth number 1. There's been a lot of confusion going on within the Roblox Doors community regarding about the differences between Green Grumbles and the regular Patrol Grumbles. The myth is that the community believes that Queen Grumbles are the ones that contain 8 tentacles compared to regular Grumbles that only contain 5 tentacles. We even thought this as well right when the update dropped. But if you take a look within the doors classified model files, within the room 150 models, we have both the Cream Grumble model and the regular patrol model side by side, and both entities actually do have the same amount of tentacles at 8, officially busting this myth. Myth number 2, as we know, if you end up using a lighter within the fire damp rooms, the players will end up exploding and losing the game as well. Fire Damn. is obviously ignitable by any kind of spark, including fire, but some within the community still think that it's actually still unsafe to use flashlights and electronics, especially since they can dim out and miss fire. Well, standing right before us is the fire damp room, and we are equipped with a couple flashlights. Let's see if this is actually safe or not. We can even turn on our flashlights, which does officially bust this myth in the process. Myth number three. The Roblox Doors Wikipedia page does state that laser pointers does have many uses and one of them is that the item can be used in order to attract gloom bats to a specific area away from the player without being attacked as well. But is that actually possible? After scouring the YouTube pages for about an hour, I was not able to find any footage that could back this claim up. So I guess it's up to us to hop into a game in order to find this one out ourselves. So I was able to get the laser pointer and if we indeed try to use it against a large pile of Goombats, it really doesn't seem to do much of anything. They just seem to be swarming around randomly and especially when the laser pointer is on one specifically, they didn't seem to care about it at all. I would have to say that the weakest point is invalidated as we didn't see any clear movements towards the light and thus this myth is now busted. Myth number 4. Deep within the mines, there are actually some rooms in which players will have to swim under a specific maze in order to continue on. But some within the community say that if you do carry and use your electronics within the water, it could destroy them much like in real life. Again, there's not really any footage online of people trying the specific trick out, so let's check this one out as well. I was really lucky and found a water room at door 136. And well, it is interesting to note that you can use flashlights and electronics while swimming underneath the water. Now as for the destruction, yes, it does seem to have an effect on flashlights as they keep turning off due to the short circuiting. Though once you're on dry land, it's back to normal which means that this myth is now busted. Myth number 5. We already know that there are two types of grumbles within floor 2 and that players can use a light source in order to significantly slow them down. Players have noted that when using light sources, they can even be able to slow down the Queen Grumble too. Well, apparently, that's not really the case. Linksy was able to record themselves trying to flash a flashlight on the Queen Grumble, and you can notice the entity shows no plans on slowing down, moving considerably faster than the normal Grumble under the same conditions. Furthermore, busting this myth completely. Myth number 6, yet another grumble myth, but this time the community does state that if any grumble does come into contact with the player, then they will end up getting eaten by the grumble. But there are some weird scenarios where the grumble's tentacles could clip through the wall, causing some panic to newer players who haven't really seen this entity yet within the game. Could these tentacles cause a game over if you do in fact touch the entity? Luckily, it has been confirmed that touching the tentacles of the grumble won't cause it to harm you as the tentacles themselves have no collisions enabled. This means you can literally walk right past them and juke them out further causing yet another busted myth. Myth number 7. 
We've already known that light sources can actually attract crumbles and can even slow the regular ones down in most cases. But players have been saying that every light source, more specifically the laser pointer, could also be used in order to temporarily blind the entity as well. It does make sense. The laser pointer can be used to blind giggles, but is it strong enough to blind an entity 10 times bigger its size? Well, unfortunately, we've tried using the laser pointer not only as a light source, but also as a weapon against the grubble entities in a previous run, and we did conclude that they don't really have any effect onto this entity, also officially busting this myth. Myth number 8. Giggles are very sensitive to visible light. Not only do they not like flashlights and bulk lights, but they also hate laser pointers as well if you are using them. Folks do mention within the community of doors that every flashlight is able to temporarily stun the giggle entity, especially if they are camping on top of popular walkways and paths. But is this actually true? Let's flash bring the entity with all of these items and see which ones truly work. As you can see, the normal lights do work except for the shoulder strap light. It's noticeable weaker compared to the other flashlights and it appears the giggle is not phased by its effect, busting this myth that all flashlights can work on disabling these entities. Myth number 9, with the introduction of the new candle upgrade, the possessed candle can be seen and also used throughout the game, but there are several misconceptions about the item within the community, one of which that it works exactly like the regular candle, but with a longer fuel time in range. While that may be true, the two different candles are actually way more different than you'd think. First of which, the possessed candle cannot be refueled, meaning once you've used it all up, that's all you get. Next, the possessed candle actually doesn't even trigger the fire damp gas as it seems to be burning off an alternative source of fuel. And lastly, you can't even use the possessed candle without needing a lighter or fire source to light it up. It's way more overpowered compared to the regular candle, busting this myth. Myth number 10, it can be noted that the crucifix is a very powerful item within Roblox doors, and it can be used on nearly every entity within the whole game. But but that does beg the question, can the crucifix actually be used on the Seek final boss within the game? There is even a screenshot from the Doors community server that shows a player actively using one on the blob and making the crucifix powers turn red. Well, unfortunately, this is fake, as we've had many players try to actively crucify the Blob Seek, but as you'd expect, it doesn't really work at all. Sure, some hackers were able to program it with exploits, but within the actual game, it is impossible to do so, busting this myth officially. What other myths have you heard? Like and subscribe, and see you on the next one.